he's lost, too. All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Commissioner Feldheim will be listening to questions. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. First item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Move. Second. Motion by Weiss, second by Feichert. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Now we'll open the meeting up for any public comment from anyone, either in person or via telephone. Does anyone out there would like to address the commission? Going once, going twice. Why? All right. Yeah. You no. Know, <laughs> must be doing things right. No complaints <laughs> this week. <laughs> yeah. Either that or don't do any good. <laughs> All right, next on the agenda, Patricia Kendall, to go to Prairie Museum Director with her annual report and department update. Good, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, I want to share something first with my friends. Is this a bribe? <laughs> no. I just like to say for the official record that it's not. With <laughs> the, the friends and us too. Yes, yes. But that's just a hope for moment a little bit. We've got Thank a Snoopy and the Red Baron coming. These are human consumption, right? They are. Oh, but okay. I have to tell you that my 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 sixteen year old she didn't like them. She right? didn't think much of them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so what I'd like to do is uh, give you our annual report. Normally I do this like the beginning of March, end of February, but I have to tell you that we've been busy. <laughs> There's been a lot going on for us. Um, I did send an electric, uh, electronic copy, but if you wanted to look at another one, I, I've got that. I did print off some if you wanted to take a look. And I also want to point out, too, that um, the, uh, <laughs> the new copier that I got at the uh, uh, last year's budget prints beautiful. Just beautiful color on here. Oh, wow, you did this on your new printer? Yes. Good. Worth the money, obviously. Uh, well, yes. Well, we're going to work it like a dog for the next five years. <laughs> right. So I'm going to tell you that 2021 was all about uh, finding that new normal, uh, which I think we did. And actually, it turned out to be better than expected. Um, our attendance is in recovery, for sure. In 2019, our average attendance per day was about 48 to 50 people. And that, that takes into account if there was a blizzard and no one came to. We had an event and 700 people came. In 2020, our average daily attendance, we were closed to the public for several several weeks, was 27. But now, back in 21, we were back up to 45 as our average daily attendance. So I consider that good, uh, better than good, better than expected. So we're really excited to see what 22 is going to, to bring us to. My, my goal is to have over 50. I'll always have more. Um, so we had many uh, events last year. We had the Harvest Stroll, which was our best attended event ever. It was just under a thousand people. Yeah. And that was because it was an outside event. It was at downtown. It was right outside our building. People loved it. Um, we had to go looking for 400 pumpkins, and the Hutterites could only get me 200. <laughs> so we went looking. Um, if you need to know where to find pumpkins, um, at Brookings. There's a farm near Brookings uh, that you just pull up. Into the into the field and you just load them. Um, of course, it was raining that day, obviously. Um, but yes, yeah, so I, I, nobody did not have a, a a good time. Everybody had a good time. Um, our holiday open house, almost back to normal. We had about 690 people come. Um, generally, we have just under 800 people come to that. And then our history alive, which we just started last year at Centennial Village, um, about 260 people came to that. So we think when we do it again this year. Well, you have to gain momentum for your events. You have to kind of have people, oh, that's right, the museum has that thing. Um, and it takes a couple of times to do that. We just had our student art show um, two weeks ago at the ARC. Um, Dave Eckert is a very good partner for us. Um, we actually, in 2019, before we had to modify our student art show, the, the attendance had been declining, and we're thinking, well, the schools don't have funds, art is not top of their list, you know, for their art students to go. We were thinking, should we take this two-day event to, and just consolidate it into a one-day event? Because the schools can choose which school to go to, which day to go to. Um, 
this year there was no way we could have done that because we had 18 schools and 133 students. We haven't had that many schools with students since 2014. So you know now the schools are saying, yes, our students go, you know, not just the sports, but you know, everybody go do your thing. And one of our teachers told us, because we had gathered our teachers for a little session just for them during this uh, program, we asked, okay, what was your, tell us a feel good moment. And one of the teachers said, when we got in the van to come to Aberdeen and all my art students were there and we were, we were gonna go to this event. It was like, that was her moment of, we're back. We're back and my art students matter. So that, that meant a lot to us too. Um, so our exhibits, um, <coughs> so previously in 2019 we had 20 rotating uh, exhibits. Um, in 21 we had 27 rotating exhibits in our building. And in 21 we had 11 outreach exhibits and other events where we had a booth like at Fort Sisseton or Oktoberfest or you know the downtown association asked us to do a display for um, the anniversary of ADA and things like that. So we're always answering those calls. So we're we try to be everything to everyone. Sometimes we say yes too too much, but <laughs> but we give it we give it our best. Um, so the only other thing I wanted to talk to you at page 23 in my in so our financial summary because um, we are going to be doing budgets pretty soon. So as you know, at the end of the year, I tried to take in that that copier, and it would have been perfect, but I accidentally paid my January rental for the storage unit in December. I got the bill and I paid it, and I should have sat on it for another couple of weeks. If I wouldn't have done that, I would have slid through and I would have had $1,084 left at the end of last year with the purchase of the copier, not getting the supplement. Um, that was... We'll let you buy this. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it don't hurt to prepay because things go up. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. Um, and Especially really, lately. Yeah. And, and and honestly, with the copier, I'm yeah, I'm totally glad that I did that at the end of 21 because if I would have waited until one was available and then paid for it, I don't know what I would have paid. Right. Now with all of that, as it was, it took five months to get so. But again, beautiful. It's just yeah, beautiful it's copy. copy. Like the pictures of the people are really great. They are yeah. really, really good in here. Um, I am very pleased. I am very pleased with it. Okay. Did you have any questions about my report, my annual report? Oh, it looks good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, y you know, I'm just here to bring sunshine and rainbows to the commission. <laughs> 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 Honestly. Well, I spent too today. much time on it, but the, the social media things that you do to communicate with the public at large and to promote the events that you have and then also the display show yeah. the participation that you have and stuff's all really good and it's pretty Thank you. It's, take somebody who's having fun with it most of the time to do True. it effectively. So having someone on staff that, that's doing that but it, 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 <laughs> it, gets, it gets noticed and it, uh, yeah, it's worth the effort. So. It, it is worth it and that's why we have our summer intern starting on Monday. Um, and she is a, I believe she's a sophomore at, at Northern, and she's an English major, but she's also a volleyball uh, player on the volleyball team. She is so excited to start, and I said, well, you're going to do my social media, and also, every day you come, somebody's going to pull you and have you do, you do something in the museum that you probably weren't expecting. Um, we're going to keep her busy for 180 hours this summer. The remodeled uh, display area on the second floor is really nice, too, and it turned out really well. I am, I am very pleased. So I'll give you my updates, um, and one of them, my top of my list is Lamont Gallery. So the Lamont Gallery, we gained 170 square feet. Um, if you haven't been over there yet to take a look, uh, we raised the ceiling, we have a new sound system, uh, we have a new picture hanging system, new lighting. Um, it is the most beautiful space in our building. And all of that funding came from uh, Nancy Lamont, over the years gave money every year for use in the Lamont Gallery. Uh, we had some other specified funds that we had um, saved up for that. Uh, the county didn't pay for any of that. Okay, and then next after that, so then we're gonna tackle the children's exhibit and then our railroad exhibit. And our children's exhibit is a little well-loved, I'll say, um, and it needs a little attention, but it's gonna be converted over to a one-room schoolhouse. Uh, play area and imaginative play and, and uh, with an exhibit. 
And then our railroad exhibit, we're going to expand that little, I told you before, that little train can't go around in a circle mm -hmm. forever. Um, I'm going to apply for a BNSF uh, grant on that mm -hmm. because they do provide that for history and for culture, cultural institutions. Um, and I, I have a guy. Um, he's retired. He's retired from Bus Auto, but it's Charlie Davis. He's going to help us. He's with the James Valley Model Railroad. And so he retired, and then the next day he came into the museum and said, okay, put me to work. No problem. Um, so upcoming then this summer is Snoopy and the Red Baron from the Charles Schultz Museum. That's the art of Charles Schultz and some other uh, ephemera from that, some film strips, and uh, Snoopy's Doghouse is coming. And that will open on June uh, I think that I have that 19th, whatever Father's Day is, it opens on Father's Day. 19th of June. 19th of June? Yeah. Um, and through September 10th. Um, and then we have Father's history. <laughs> Good. Well, then you'll be there. Yeah. Um, history Live, June 11th, is at Centennial Village. Um, I have sent messages to Marcus, and I've also called him up to message for him, so I'm waiting for him to get back to me just to confirm all my dates and all the things that we want to do out there which includes camp, history camp and art camp at Centennial Village. Uh, that's in June and July. We're about three quarter full already for those. We have a registration uh, system for them and they're about three quarter full. And then along with Snoopy, we're gonna have a cartoon camp at the museum. So you can have your kids come and learn how to draw cartoons. Uh, we're gonna do that two times this summer. Okay, so and I want to give you another update too. Um, I went to the um, it's the Rural Philanthropy Institute. It was their fundraising program that um, our foundation paid for my tuition and then you paid for my travel. But it's through the South Dakota Nonprofit Capacity Building Program. And I went to Mitchell in April. And I'm going to talk really fast, but it was like uh, what I compared it to was uh, drinking from a fire hose. <laughs> they put about 12 days of information into four. Uh, but it's all about ethical fundraising, um, uh, finding your constitu constituency uh, and doing the research for it, your annual fund, your donor research, your planned giving, your major gifts, um, and how to motivate people to um, believe in your institution, capital campaigns, uh, going to foundations and corporations. Uh, all of those resources are out there. Um, and really what was interesting to me is, do you know what a DAF is? It's a donor advised fund that you can set up through your investment uh, person so that you can uh, say you want to give so much to an institution, but sometimes you can only give so much for tax purposes. But you can double up one year and then not do it one year and then, you know, something. And there's a lot to learn there that I think that was just barely grasping. But I didn't even know that that was a thing. So I could talk to someone and say, have you considered a donor advisor fund where you could be giving to us? And it would truly be effortless. We don't have to wait till you die. <laughs> it's, it's program giving yes. and it's taken into account the tax advantages. I exactly, you know. exactly. So there was so much information there. And I'll just briefly point out this was the book they gave us for mm -hmm. four days. Um, pass the test. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this was um, the first of four uh -huh. classes that I'll be going to. The others are only three days long. But after 18 months, if I want to, I can take the test to be a certified uh, fundraiser. I, I, I don't know if I want to do that, but we'll, we'll see. But it's good information. It is. It is. You um, sort of are anyway. I am. <laughs> There's so many ways to raise funds, and, and it's, you know, well, obviously, you know, we get things from 3M, we have those types of, and South Dakota Humanities and the Arts Camp Council, the federal uh, brands, but then there's also passive giving. You know, we put a hat out, you know, and that hat, hat has really helped us out at times. To, to take care of some funding. Um, we have a whirl -a wish and now we have a penny press. So we're gonna, my goal is that you do not leave the museum with change in your pocket. <laughs> or <laughs> okay, so the one other thing I wanted to talk to you about too was um, our education department. So I know social studies standards and the like have been in the news and, and things like that. And Sherry Rostern, our curator of education, she was in that first cohort for um, um, that social study standards review, that there was 40 people involved, she went through that process, she really felt that she was um, having a voice for the museum and, and what she does in the school, which I can tell you, um, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, um, we have programs that we do consistently, um, Native American games, 
uh, Everything's First Christmas, Build Your Own TP, Pioneer Games, Symmetry, and Deaf Coloring Sheets, uh, South Dakota Native American Artists, and then it goes over to the history of Aberdeen in third grade, Aberdeen's First 20 Years. I mean, I could tell you, there's, we have programs that we do. <laughs> Um, in fourth grade, they get a little bit into the use of the buffalo and homesteading, and then the railroads, Lewis and Clark, statehood, uh, the wars, and the effects on Brown County citizens uh, for world wars and the Yellowstone Trail. So we go once a month to um, a number of schools in the county, and actually we're also going to Northwestern, which is in the state county. Um, <coughs> So I can tell you that in 2018 and 2019, that school year, we went to over 400 classroom visits. Um, and then of course in 20 and 21, it was all virtual that school year. But we still managed to visit about 250. Um, and then in, in 21, we had went back into the schools and we had a total of 309 visits. So I'm just going to tell you just May's schedule, and they printed this out for me, and even I can't understand all of it. <laughs> of what we're doing um, in May for tours. We have 16 tours scheduled for May. And when we say 16 tours, that might mean, yes, but they brought two or three classes for that grade. So if, let me see here, if, um, I know we've got Ipswich is coming uh, next Monday. Um, they're bringing 29 kids, but we're going to, you know, break them up into two groups. And we've got Selby coming, we've got James Valley coming, the Hutterite, uh, schools are coming, um, all of the local ones, Broughton, so here's Dolan is coming, um, and then some of the colonies there are coming. Anyhow, we will have 21 schools from North and South Dakota coming in the in May, um, and we're going to, in our Afternoon in the Past program, we'll, we're going to have 17 of those. So now, we've gone from uh, none last year, <laughs> or barely any last year, to more than we did in in 19. Um, everybody is wanting everybody's wanting us and wants to come. And you can just kind of get that sense of how everybody feels now. They they want to be mm -hmm. out. They want to be participating and they want to get the kids out. Um, and they're still calling in, so we're still taking those uh, requests. So currently we visit second and third grade in all of the public schools with that variety of programs in South Dakota history, and then. All of the public schools have requested that we come for kindergarten and first grade. They want that too. I, I don't know if anybody has teachers in your lives, but they are, they don't have time. They don't have time. Um, there are a lot of standards that they have to meet. And when we come in, we can give a program and the teacher can correct papers or can prepare for the next, you know, session. And, and we provide, that's just one of the things that we provide. Currently for Ron Colley, we go to second, third, and fourth grade, and then the sixth grade is our junior doses, which over the past 29 years, we've had 18,000 hours of junior doses. We keep track of that. Ron Colley said, can you come to the kindergarten and the first grade? And by the way, can you come to the fifth grade, too? Um, they really do like Sherry over there. Aberdeen Christian, so currently we do the two, second and third grade, but they are they have been insisting that we come and do the first grade, and then they're also interested in that 7th to 12th grade social studies, the every Christian. They would like a little bit more um, um, assistance there, a little more programming. So we go to Warner. We just started visiting kindergarten in Warner. We haven't been there. We haven't been in Warner before, and you think they're just nine miles out, um, but we have, we have not. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I turn around when I get into the yeah. house. Um, so they would. So we want to go back and build that program there. Frederick, we go once a year, but we visit pre-K through sixth grade when we get to Frederick. Fr Frederick has all their class, all their school together now. They used to be in Barnard, but now they're all in Frederick. Um, they would like us to come, like every other Friday. They have a four-day school system, and they go longer on those four days. And then every other Friday, they have programming at the school for for kids, and they want us to come. Well, let me tell you, it's a half an hour to Frederick. <laughs> <laughs> and you spend time there, that's a half an hour back. Um, so we just don't have time and the staff to get there. Broughton, we go about um, four times a year. Uh, we go to the pre-K through second grade in Groton. Uh, they would like us to come once a month. Um, and Northwestern, we go two times a year. They are very satisfied. We developed a Spink County program for them. <laughs> All right, and then our education department goes to the Everdeen Senior Center. They would like some more regular programming. 
Darien Lodge, which was Primrose, but they switched over those two buildings there. They have two facilities there. <coughs> they have called and asked for programming. And then the Primrose Memory Care Unit, uh, we've talked to them before, and pre-COVID we went to see them. Um, they That's a program that's more specialized because the memory, if you have anybody who has dementia or Alzheimer's, you want to get them talking, and so it's a, it, it takes a special way of doing that and, and people that can talk to them and get them talking, otherwise it's it's um, a little more difficult. You can find a topic or a subject yes. that's, that strikes and yes. really makes a, an impact. Sometimes when they've gone to the senior center or the they've gone to the Groton um, nursing home too, they'll do butter, turn butter, <coughs> and nobody wants to help. <coughs> but then we'll start saying, well, do you remember doing this? Did you ever do this? And all of a sudden, they're talking while we're turning butter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're not helping, but they're having a good time because they're sharing memories. Yeah, makes a connection. Yeah. That's important to us. All right, so here's our other request uh, from Gordon Treetop. If you know who he is, he's um, Aberdeen Public Schools. Um, he is the Native American programming um, for the public schools. He's only one person. He was able to visit two fourth grades last year and talk about bison. Um, that's all he could get in. He has asked us for help to get into the elementary school. He has funds for Native American speakers and storytellers, but he doesn't have the resources or know-how to get those into um, all the schools. So he's asked for our help in that. And then finally for education, I'll just tell you that 3M invited us to apply for, to be invited uh, to apply for the 3M STEM Education Equity Grant um, for nonprofits. And uh, so we came up with one. Uh, we called it the D DPM STEM Camp. And really it's the history of science in Brown County. And what we went through, because 3M has $20,000 for this grant, um, what would happen is that they want a sustainable program that can continue year after year. So we gave them our, our plan. Um, and we would talk about biology, anthropology, ecology, and conservation. And those are the sciences that really apply. Um, and a little bit of chemistry for food preservation and the like. So we did come up with something for that. They wanted to know what our demographics are because this is geared towards underserved populations. Um, so you've got your Native American and um, dis disabled populations, but also female students is also your underserved in STEM. And this is important to 3M, and 3M right now is a little flush, um, so they're being generous. So you better believe I got right on that and, and <laughs> got my education staff on top of that. We had about a week to submit um, a program uh, proposal to them, which we did. I haven't heard back, um, but I will continue to look for that type of funding because that's important to us. Uh, we want to add in that STEM or STEAM, which includes um, art, um, and then also more Native American programming. We just really feel that we need to serve those those two areas. So when I come to uh, giving my budget proposal this year, I am going to ask for one of my people to be bumped up to full time and that will be education. Um, I think that's a good trade considering that my previous position was full time in the office and that's still part time. So I'm not really asking for anything I didn't have before. But I'll lay that all out when I do my my budget proposal. Um, all right, so one more thing before if I see if you have any questions. So latest Aberdeen magazine, we're in here three times, just so you know. <laughs> and the first one is um, they went to Holgate and talked to the students there. I don't know if you've seen this yet, but I just want to let you know that Darius thinks that we are the goat. It's right here. <laughs> and if you know what the goat is, it's the goat of all time. Um, I was really pleased to see that. Apparently we made an impression on Dar Darius at some point. But he's a middle schooler, and he's saying that. You know, he's not elementary. Um, the other part we're in is, um, well, we have our ad for Snoopy the Red Baron, because we do advertise local. And then, um, so this. The Country School Experience in Brown County by Patrick Gallagher. So Patrick came to the museum and we put him in a room with boxes and boxes of research and books and books. And so we are mentioned in here several times because Patrick is very thorough in his research. Um, but a lot of these pictures are courtesy of us. Um, honestly, I found things that I didn't know we had and I learned things that I didn't know <laughs> that we had. When you think of country schools, country schools went right up through the 60s. Um, there are people reading this article 
eight years. So which one did you go to? Huffman Hilltop. Huffman Hilltop. McPherson County. McPherson. Yeah. It's the only one we've been talking. Not the first time. No, my oldest brother and sister went to country school too. And they lived right outside the city limits. Right here. It was a four year school and you went eight? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, got, I went eight years and got a college degree. <laughs> 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 but, so, do you have any questions for me? They've been very thorough. Yeah. Well, I do come with too much information and I talk too fast. I acknowledge this. But also, I'm coming before Dirk. No, <laughs> 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 yeah, this was my shot. <laughs> Before you get, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so I'm down in, in County Roads, and it's been raining for two weeks, and um, so I really hope you enjoy as well. There's a very important uh, presence in the, in the. Anyhow, I got to tell you, the museum is the best job to have in the county. <laughs> I'm not sure I'll argue with you right now. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. It is. Good it job is. We have. Um, it, we're more than just glass half full. We are really excited about what we do. We do take on too much, I will admit that. Um, but it's totally worth it. So. Well, well, just, go ahead. I just think it's fantastic what you do for the younger generation. The yeah. kids all the way through. I mean, uh, get them involved, get them off the iPads, and <laughs> get them interested in something else. I think it's wonderful. Well, well, thank you. And plus, when kids ha understand their county history, it's like, why do we have, like, the roads where they are? Why do we have, you know, the bridges where they are? Why do we, you know, understanding how this was formed and, and how to, you know, actually create a town and a city and, and all of that. And then when they get older, they're like, well, I understand how things work. I understand how this citizenry and municipal governance works uh, just a little bit and that just gives them a, a more of a connection and hopefully they stay here and they have their business here and they raise their family here and, and all of that. Community leaders. Uh, yes and we need, we definitely need them to do that for us too. So. Yeah so it's very well rounded and, and responsive uh, programming that you do and, and really good explanation. Um, on page 22 it shows and that you know you and your staff, but also the volunteers and the hours that they put in, and then the programming that you do, like Dennis is talking about, you know, with, with younger people, you engage them. It's not just like, okay, we walked through it. We saw that. Uh, it's not so many engagement opportunities that you have on all the way through. You know, you mentioned the junior docents program, which has been going on. And, 29 years. It really, and really makes a difference in, in those kids' development having to take a leadership role, you know, at the museum to be able to do the, the tours and, and build the confidence as well as the knowledge base. So we just had our party for our junior docents, um, and like I said, it's the 29th year, and then they, we have banners from every year that they've signed, and so they go back and they can see their siblings, but they can see their parents mm -hmm. who signed it too. And one of the teachers yesterday had been a junior docent. Yeah. So, and so we made him tell us about his exhibit that he had to give a tour on in sixth grade, which he still knew this much. <laughs> <laughs> it was the farming exhibit. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, our, the reach is long, yep. and, and you have to go for the end goal that you don't know when mm -hmm. it will come to fruition, too. So, sure. um, same with fundraising. You know, when you make connections with people, you don't know when that's going to return to you. Right. So, I'm, I'm in it for the long haul, uh, at least until I retire. <laughs> Stuck with me. <laughs> good for us. We're happy to have you. Well, thanks. Well, good. Well, I, I'd like to turn it over to Dirk now and talk <laughs> about roads. <laughs> <laughs> you also bring the sunshine and the rainbow, so Sure. <laughs> but I we, uh, we got a, a segue. <laughs> <laughs> we have a about a four foot piece of rail railroad rail that we salvaged because it's got oh. a stamp and everything on it and we cleaned it up. It's from 1894 and it came out of, uh, it's the line that used to go up to Leola. Um, so, so I told him to keep it. I don't know if it's something you want or you'd like to see it because it's when you're like talking about your uh, your railroad thing. And I believe that would have been one of the last lines that was put in because it, uh, it didn't get built all the way like the original plan was. It only oh, got yeah. built part of the way, if I remember right. You see, and now you set that aside because you thought about it, or you thought it was cool. Well, kind of both. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, you also have a you have a stop sign. I've forgotten to 
I have to recover. That's at the museum that was donated to the museum that the county didn't own. We're just sort of taking care of it. So oh, at some point I have yeah. to come round that up too. We need but to talk. Yeah. <laughs> and then the parking lot needs to be we gotta shoot some oil on the parking lot sometime this summer. And I'll have theory yeah. strike. I'm just throwing that in there. I don't know if that affects you, but I was just thinking about that. Well but no, and then parking lot and then our building. And so those you take care of the parking lot, I'll take care of the building. Very I'll, good. I'll I'll work on that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do anything with the building either way. So. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys cooperating? Yeah. We're, we're co-workers. Yep. Yep. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And just like following Kurt when he's talking about how great everything is out at the youth camp and fairgrounds, and I get to come in with all the gloom and <laughs> no. Morning, Dirk. Howdy. How is everybody? Good. 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 It's not snowing. It's not snowing. <laughs> it's not. Where? <clears throat> I'll touch on the flooding here in a minute. The little flooding that's starting to be a pain. Um, I have two right of ways. These are for Northern Electric, and uh, one of them. It's just born under the road. Excuse <coughs> me. It's out here. It's just just putting a new uh, electrical service over to the house on the side. So they're just sitting on this side, and all it is is pour under the road. Motion. Motion by Wheat. Second. Second by Fighter to approve the right of way from Northern Electric. All in favor, signal favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. The second one, I tried calling Northern Electric this morning just to verify this, but there's nothing else there, so I'm assuming it's for the railroad crossing on 14. The new railroad crossing, and they're starting on that. Okay. You know, Dakota Street extent, or Dakota Street, got that on my head. Uh, Fairgrounds Road extended over here where it runs into 14. It's that township mile there that we may end up with someday. Uh, that from there down to the railroad tracks. It's uh, in the west ditch. And I would recommend it for approval. I'm assuming it's to run the, the uh, signals and stuff. Mm -hmm. So moved. Second. Motion by Weiss, second by Feldheim. All in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. All right. I'll, uh, I want to touch on a few other things. A little department update quick. It's nothing you guys didn't. Fun stuff. Yeah. It's just. Tell you where we're at on a few things. I will have, and for you too, Elisa, uh, probably next week I'll come in with a map and kind of outline a little more specifics about what we're going to do this year. So we got that hanging up there. But this is just a quick outline on a couple things. So it, the things I'm going to say are going to generate 23 more questions. So I'm just going <laughs> to we'll go through them here. All right, a uh, couple you got the email about us putting a speed bump in Mansfield. Um, putting speed bumps in is you are purposely and knowingly and sanctioning putting a defect in the road. And as Ross would probably back me up to some extent, no matter how many signs we put out there, he's going to be busy trying to completely absolve us if somebody hits that, even if they are speeding and launches it off the and uh, that's just not something that's a real viable option to put one right in the middle of a town like that. The other concerns in the email, I, I mean, I, I, I don't uh, disagree with any of them. Um, it's almost a repeat of up in, in Westport. Maybe the solution is to not, I mean, I'm being a little facetious here so nobody panic, but maybe the solution is you just quit maintaining the road and make it so you have to drive slower. I actually sat in on a, a session out in Buffalo about gravel roads and the problem they have is they get them too nice and then people drive like hell on them because they can mm -hmm. and then it wrecks the road again and it's just kind of a weird but uh, anyway sort of like build them and we will come right? yeah or 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 don't maintain them and we will leave that would be even better but <laughs> yeah um, the speed, speed limit sign does a slow down is there a speed limit sign yeah I mean like 20 like 25 20 it's pretty slow I guess the only thing you can fix that with is law enforcement and somebody handing tickets out. It doesn't take very long for a small community to figure out that. Anybody <laughs> coming through unless they see him sitting here. Like, well. Yeah, and I'm. What's the um, what means? It's a county line. What is the arrangement of patrolling that highway? I mean, does the Spring County Sheriff's Office do they spend any time up there? Or does the Brown well, County? 
sheriff's office spend any time down there? What's the Pretty what's the patrolling? <laughs> well, oh, that. Uh, first, first off, I'm, I See. take care of the road. I know yeah. where our responsibility and right. Spain County yeah. start. But nope. I guess I just threw that question no. out there. I, 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 I'm drawing some assumptions yeah. here, yeah. but um, if something happened on the south side of the road, technically, Spain County would have to respond. But I also know that if you hit a deer south of Groton, the Groton deputized Groton City Cop might be the, the county guy that you deal with. You know what I mean? So I don't know how that... I do know when they had that auction down there, uh, I can't think of the guy's name, but they had a giant auction, and it did con cause quite a concern in Spink County as to the number of people that would be parked out on that on that road, you know, and whether or not that would affect it. I don't know how law enforcement splits that stuff up. As far as the signage, the speed limits, all that, that's all our administration. Our everything that's of the road. Every, yeah, everything that's east of the bridge okay. at, on the river. Mm -hmm. Or east, west. Everything west of the bridge is ours all the way to the county line. But the volume of activity to, to say, okay, that's going to be on the top ten list of things that we, you know, they would need well, to do today I'm is going to yeah. be What I'm thinking minimal. is how many, you know, if you, if you maybe did a, spend a little bit of time patrolling it and you hooked a few people for speeding through there, maybe it might get attention because yeah. obviously <laughs> somebody's complaining, you yeah. know, and somebody needs to be ticketed. Yeah, or a couple yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah, and that information. But the word get around. Yeah, that information <laughs> was shared with the sheriff's office as well. Yeah. They were all communicated on it. So, um, I don't think it's that unique. I mean, to me, it's almost a repeat of of the Ten sequence of things that happen in Westport. You know, you can have the same issue on Eighth Avenue. You can have it. Yeah. You know, any pick and street <laughs> anywhere. Everybody likes going faster than they're supposed to. Yeah. So, from the yeah. highway standpoint, I really don't like putting something in the way purposely that right um, uh, okay road four that's been a popular topic today we're completely covering that in gravel as in preparing it for milling the right north of fairgrounds road the <coughs> two tenths of a mile mm -hmm. we're just covering up with gravel to get by for right now doesn't have to have any speed bumps put on it <laughs> no they're well they're there right now and um, again, I don't want to dig deep, and I'm not prepared to go into a deep discussion about that road specifically, but we do have that one, the one between Farm Power and Butler, and then in front of the wastewater plant on the south bypass, including the bridge, which are no longer, those first two are still technically outside of city limits, but they've got city limits completely surrounded, just the right of way hasn't been annexed. Which is that now? That's Dakota Street, road, County Road 4. Okay. And <coughs> between Butler and Farm Power, because that division of Dave Schumacher's to the south is in city limits, but it follows the right of way line. It did not annex the road. So, so there's still County well, Road. And you're talking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're talking south all the way to the curb. Yeah, I'd have to go out there and like look and say, yeah. but it's like right here. So, um, in addition to that, the south, the wastewater plant, when they annexed the wastewater plant into city limits, now, and I have to be careful here, but from the research that I've done, it looks like they just went straight south of the garden. So it included that bridge down there. Well, I think that bridge is coming up for inspection, and then we're going to get into the county can't be spending the property tax money in the city limits on mm -hmm. construction without a joint powers agreement or whatever. So, did not even, that's more than I even meant to go into that today, but that's a topic that we have to kind of sit down and, and probably involve somebody at the city and figure out, okay. Well, it was an ongoing thing that, you know, we used to have the understanding that if the city's going to annex to a right away, it should take the road to go with it, especially if it jumps across the other side and it gets into, okay, if it's not a complete block quarter section mile whatever it is then you know how do we take do that yeah. on a case by case basis so you don't have you know for instance down there by the wastewater treatment plant they, they didn't annex across the whole quarter right right so you can have them take care of 300 yards and well that's what I'm and honestly right now we're working on the South bypass I don't know if you've been down there we're right, trying to do some reclamation down there 
and I just told him, we're not, Jesus, this is not the time to make the stand, mm-hmm. okay, just, we'll just do yeah. it and, and make it all be consistent, rather than... Yeah, if we're going to the intersection plus 300 yeah. yards, and that's it. <laughs> right, that's <laughs> stop it. so... It's like at the plant on the other end, but yeah. that's a unique. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, road four, we'll make that better. It, our, I don't know if you guys have been getting called. We've been getting per- pounded pretty hard at the highway department for that one. Um, Okay, Bridget Sand Lake, we got some movement on that finally. Um, so I was standing out there looking to the east. No, I wasn't either. I was looking to the west. <laughs> and the piece of land that we've been trying to acquire for the bridge project is backwater, which incidentally it's filled back up now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sitting here going, I can't for the life of me find out why we're battling for this piece of land. So I had them go back and fix it so they don't need that piece of land. So it's eliminated the need to get right away on that side. Mm-hmm. So the other thing we did is we moved it from being a state letting to being a local letting. We'll just repeat what we did with that last bridge. We'll just be opening the bids here and we'll pay the contractor or pay a, an engineering firm to do the inspection for You're it. talking about the maple. The river, the yeah, it'll be the same way that we, we set maple. up that maple bridge. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and as a side note, the big bridge program, which I got a touch something on you in this conversation too. Um, The big bridge program is trying to move in its entirety to all local lettings. When they first started with it, they wanted to keep a little bit of the state involved. So the local offices were going to do the inspection. And the first one we did up at Hall Pit, the the local DOT engineering office did the project inspection for that. Well, what's happened, as you might guess, and it's ha- it's going to end up, we're going to have quite a log jam. We got money hit, drinking out of the fire hose of money coming at us, and we don't, we got work to do with project development, getting the projects going. There's, they I don't know, they, don't, they don't have the staff to keep right, up. Right, they don't have the staff to keep it rolling. There's not even enough contractors to build all this stuff right now. We're gonna have, we got a leg here we're gonna have to work through. But anyway, for <coughs> that reason, the state is, now they're like, okay, we promote local lettings. We've done, lo- we did local lettings with big projects before this even became a requirement. They think we're growing up enough now yeah, to do so, it. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty easy. So I had that moved into the local letting. We are gonna have a little bit of additional cost because they have to kind of go through the, they have to make a small design change for that right away thing. And then they got to bring everything up to date because this bridge is five years yeah. old and yep. this project's been going on. So, so have you got any idea at all on a timeline? Yep, it won't. Okay, neither one of these bridges, being the Maple Bridge or the Sand Lake Bridge, are uh, are going to have uh, any action this year. The Maple one may get tore out at the end of the year. It might end up being something like that, but we'll let that. Let's say that in the next two months we have the bridge letting for the Sand Lake Bridge. We'll give them, if they want to tear it out in the winter, um, that's the other thing that's happening is they're allowing two seasons for these projects to keep the cost down because mm-hmm. the cost, we got lucky on that last one and I hope this one will be close too. In other words, it kind of confirms conforms a little bit more to where the contractors are at and what they're able to do. Exactly. I don't remember if you were back on the commission because it was right after I started. We bid that bridge up at uh, uh, West Ahequa. And it came in at, we bid it at a bad time. And it, it was, I mean, it was like a $900,000 too much. And so we, we waited about three months, did it in the fall, and the price came down about a million bucks. So that, Honestly, unless you are up against the wall right now, if you if you can wait a little bit, and I know the people that need the bridge probably don't feel exactly the same way, but we're not talking about something that went posted and now they've been inconvenienced for the last year. This is something that's been a slow burn, mm-hmm. finally getting eligible for money. So it's I'm kind of to the point where let's just get them in and okay which brings me to Kathy since we we're going to do local lettings on both of those bridges what happens is we have to pay we have to pay everything up front and then we get state money back it's not federal money we get state money back as a reimbursement and on both of those <laughs> both of those projects we'll be responsible for 20% of it is all so um, so we'll get 80% back. Yeah, so let's just say it's a $2 million bridge. We'll have to pay all that up front. And they are pretty good about 
um, the leg and getting the money. And you're looking to execute these projects in 2023? Yes. So we'll visit for your budget yep. for the revenue and expense side. And, yeah. and, the, and that, I guess that's the other thing I'm throwing out here. We'll be laying out, so my budget is going to spend like $4 million for these bridges that we're sh going to get back. And I would like the spending authority replaced so I can still use that money to pave later in the season. Yeah, we'll visit when we do your Right. I'm, yeah. I'm just, and I was so proud of myself that it's, I could tell you right up, it's state money. It's not federal money. So, yes, yes. Very good. So, will, will the uh, legislative audit, will they allow for money like what he's talking about to be put back into his budget, or does it have to go through the general fund? He's a special revenue, or not he, yeah. the highway is a function of a special revenue fund. Okay. So, any <coughs> money stays within that fund. Okay. And that's 311, right? Yeah. That what it is? Yeah, in the, yeah, in the highway department. They the, keep any on the road is the only, the highway department is the only one that has a, a different, there's like the general fund, the 311 fund, and then Oh, we've got about 12 it. of these. Yeah. Um, but yes, the highway is the primary one that the landfill is another example yeah. of a fund that um, keeps any unspent. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, road 5, they got done with the spillway up there and opened that up. And and it was timed really, really well with the releases from <laughs> Bitestone going up and the Elm opened up the Elm Dam and I saw that. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We're gonna have a little flood event here. I don't know. I don't know how bad you're gonna be. The all crossings closed. At the last part, there. last night was about a foot from going through the cutaway, and this morning was about the same. So it kind of seems like it's. Yeah. Off. And actually, the gym isn't the gym isn't that bad. I mean, that's going to eventually slow things down. What happened? We looked at a little bit of it last week over there on the on the uh, east side of the county where the water's coming down. So mm -hmm. over there, we got some stuff that's starting to get a little <coughs> underwater. Of course, that <coughs> twenty piece of crap up here is underwater. Yeah, where they got this ditch plugged and. Well, anyway, from, uh, Foot Creek is really yeah. Wide. And that's it. I wouldn't be surprised, but with uh, Richmond could go over. I would think it would get high enough so that it'll run over. And yep. On the south. Um, up there on Road Five, since they're done now, I kind of got a little more vision. What's probably going to end up happening there because I'm trying to come up with a place. We got to squeeze out three miles that we can't pave because of the price increase. So two of them are probably going to be the first and last mile on Road 5 there. The last mile for sure will be milled and left gravel for a year, and we'll come back next year and pave it. A, in general, the same thing's going to happen with the first mile through the slough there. We're going to raise that up a little bit. But we're going to leave that gravel for until 2023. We'll pave it next year, and then the seven whatever's in here, I guess we pave that. So there's like six miles in there that'll get all overlaid. And then next year we'll come back and do those other two. But the price increase, despite the financial situation and this and that of the county and whatever monies may or may not be wherever, I'm sticking with my budget and I'm going to stay in that. And then at the end of the year, if something terrible happens, I'll have a discussion, but my goal, rather than going, well, we're going to do this anyway because the price went up, and then come back here and go, I need more money. I do not, that's not my, I'm sticking to my budget. We're going to make it fit. And then at the end of the year, if there's something that's just been left way behind, we'll address it then. But it's a good thing we did when we did. Right. Well, even the difference between when we bid road oil in the city was six weeks, and Ukraine got invaded in between there. And they, there. I mean, it was like a 20% increase for them. Does the county later. have their diesel fuel locked in? No, you can't get it anymore. That's right. Not. You, your delivery, your delivery over the rack price or the what is that? Oh, it's not OPEC. Open rate. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever the. You get a number, and they just you're just paying for the margin to have it delivered. Wow. That's enough. I'll, talk about that in a minute. But I don't even, now you got me sidetracked. Why the hell I'm did I come over here? Really, you're talking Ralph. about five up there. And oh, okay. Uh, yep. Well, and the middle of five there, about four, five, six <coughs> miles or five miles west, there's a really bad spot in there. I, Terrible soft. I have to spend the rest of the day in the office today because Cindy's gone, but i got to get up there so I can go, okay, we're milling this, we're milling this. Mm -hmm. and we're yeah, there's a there. spot in there about four or five miles over that's terrible. Yep. Two is a mess, too. When you go north of five over to the spillway. Oh yeah, 
That's really soft. Yep. Um, Judging. The, the <laughs> two and three up there, I mean, they're always bad. Uh, yeah. Two is especially because it got a lot of extra truck traffic. But right. I will, we'll, like today, we're most importantly, how do we get to the West Beach? Now? Yeah, <laughs> that's on the list. <laughs> <coughs> Okay, road five. We talked a little bit about the flooding. I, it's you know the the usual suspects are going underwater at right. this point. Um, okay, the Elm Lake access road. I'm struggling trying to get the engineers and the contractors to do what I want them to do, but we're going to get there. And uh, the plans are just about done. We'll put it up for bids here shortly. I like my real accurate terms, but I'm talking in the next four weeks, say, or whatever. And then we're going to see what it, what the bids look like and, and stuff like that. Um, I'm trying not to make this into a 10 alarm fire, which when you have a bunch of state agencies and you're on the county line and, right. and fishermen involved. I got asked last night, why didn't you put a bridge back in? Yeah, I just I know. paused and I go, think about your question there, would you? <laughs> We're only at 60 minutes looking at this bridge to nowhere. I don't, I don't know what happened. We spent $2 million for this bridge to go fishing. Um, okay, so that's, that's moving forward. Hopefully I'll have a little more uh, specific thing, but we've got a vision. It's gonna. It's and if anybody thinks we're building a uh, truck route up there or <laughs> anything like that, this thing is gonna be league minimum in width. It's probably gonna be posted to trucks. And I mean, if guys got to get in there to get hay or put cattle in and out, we can do that. That's fine. But bare bones. And it's gonna be right. It's gonna have stop signs and at right turns. Not anything when we're doing this and I got to get out in people's pastures we're saying right in the right of way it's going to be about a 30 mile an hour road and and you can get there. How many miles is that from the one and west? Half. One, one and, and a half. half. One, one mile north, north, and, north and, a half. and a half. Back to the yeah, west. Or east. east. And for east and then you're on the county property. When we get on the county property which that's another note does anybody do we have is anybody haying that piece up there right above the spillway? Not that I'm aware of. I, so. I don't think so. I don't think so. No, it's just let it run. Okay. So that well, that's actually where all the pluses and minuses will go is on our property. If we have to borrow dirt, if we have extra dirt, if we have to move the road somewhere else, once we get it to our property, the county's property, then it'll be a little more of a... How many, acres, how many acres does the county have on the west, on the east side? So there's... East of the, of the new... And on the north. East well, and north of the new spillway. East and north of north the spillway. Okay, so we got the 40 that's on the south. There's a 60 up there, but some of it's underwater. I don't know how it's classified. So the first the first piece of land that's west of the bridge on the north side is the counties. Okay, on the west side. And it goes up to where, I mean, it, it includes <coughs> the spillway and then up above it goes in there yeah. two, 300 feet till you, there's a pretty good fence corner. Where the construction site is set up now for the spillway, <coughs> you know, that county property? Yep. Yep. We have the, uh, so, uh, let's see, from that section line, we ha I said a 40, I believe it's an 80. Okay. So we have the full quarter or half mile width, that's the counties, and then a quarter deep because it's. Uh, so it'd be basically, an the line, the quarter line is down below the spillway and down below the dam itself. And Runs across there. Yeah, so east and north and south. What's I mean, the east and west. Hickson's right. driveway would be on that north south section. Line. Yeah. And that's where the county's property starts. Right. And it would go a half mile from there, which is. It's, there's, if you go out there with binoculars, there's a fence post. You can see where the corner is. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, okay, a couple things about NACE. Uh, worthwhile and. Uh, I was amazed. Upstate New York is like going to Minnesota. I mean, as far as the people, and uh, it's not, it's not like what you New would York expect city. in the city at all. Mm -hmm. it really, really surprised me. It's it's real, real quick. Yep. Um, again, as I find this out every time, South Dakota's roads are way better now. We're a Doney state. We have hardly, you know, our our ADPs and and that. But um, despite I'm constantly mm -hmm. bitching about the DOT. 
when you go over to another state and drive on anything that's not a freeway or an interstate or a toll road, oh my God, I went on one thing that was a, it was a 281, it was a federal <laughs> highway, and I'm sitting here going, this, my phone would be ringing off the hook if this was a county road. I couldn't hardly believe it. So from that standpoint, it's really good. The conference itself really completely have shifted it where we were 20 years ago on maintenance. I, I go to these national conferences and they're just uh, some of the, I mean, extensive maintenance programs. They're just amazed by it. And it, a lot of it's what we've been doing, but there's some new chemicals. There's a new asphalt rejuvenator that I want to try that you might do in lieu of chip sealing on the right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's about half the cost of what chip sealing would be, and it treats the, the surface. And you got to do it to the right <coughs> that kind of stuff. And then uh, a lot of geogrid stuff, putting in geogrid to, you know, if you get that designed right, it has gravel equivalency. So if you put in some geogrid, you don't have to add four inches of gravel. You know, some of that was stuff we knew. It's just more of detail and more newer products about it. Um, this doesn't affect us directly because our bridges, we don't have anything big enough that we would continually do maintenance on, but uh, like say a Missouri <coughs> River Bridge, and I remember this was a, a topic in South Dakota and it was also, a, I asked this about uh, in the city of Buffalo, they have a bunch of draw bridges, rotating bridges, all these different, I mean it's just nuts. Some of them are just pure cantilevers that just lift up like this and then set back down. And uh, and they're still in use, some of them. Uh, four of them, I guess I should say, are still in use. And I go, well, no one's going to college now, going to a bridge program and learning how to do maintenance on a cantilever bridge anymore. And it's the same problem we have with the, with the Missouri River bridges in South Dakota. Is a kid graduating from Tech or SDSU it isn't learning on how you're gonna go out and hot hammer rivets to put the bridge together and so the state of South Dakota has actually had to go whoa wait a minute we got to start training up a few guys because pretty soon you're not even going to have people that understand the technology that they're looking at when you keep stuff that long or when you have to keep stuff that long so that was kind of an interesting an interesting thing you know when you're trying to maintenance is great it's great it's great but Boy, at a point, it pretty soon the technology outpaced the maintenance. Right, mm -hmm. right. Um, totally yeah, kind of like a yeah. '70s mechanic working on a 20, 2020 vehicle. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> you, can, you can change the oil and put in some brake pads, <laughs> or, or, or vice versa. Yeah. You know, modern yeah. mechanics. <laughs> well, look at the distributor. How do I know what's going on? What's with this funny cap up here? Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of interesting, and then so that was kind of some of the road stuff. Some of it wasn't pertinent. Some of it was. Some of those counties, he was this county in Indiana, and I can't remember exactly where it was, is in uh, north central or northwest Indiana, and he was on a panel talking about different road maintenance, uh, preservation techniques they do, and he's talking about they've got this much asphalt and this much gravel and this population, and, and I'm sitting here going, well, damn, that sounds a lot like, well, then he says, so like our medium, our average traffic counts about 14,000. And I went, <laughs> well, then I looked it up later, and he's in between two bigger bigger communities. And But it was just, it, when you talk about how different things are, I mean, this on paper, we were almost exactly the same right up until he, this guy was really negative on fog ceiling. And I'm a huge fan of fog ceiling. It does really well. And he says, well, we put it down, and about four months later, it's gone, you know? And I'm like, what? Well, then I, I caught him afterwards. I go, you know, I, I'm not picking an argument with you, but I've had some huge successes with that. And he said, no, you know, we, we put that on a road that's got more than about nine, ten thousand 10,000 cars. Oh, I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's they're, just, they're just wearing it out. <laughs> and then his response was right. Exactly. You use what you need yeah. for your, your situation. Well, it's kind of like the DOT's friction seal that yeah. we're putting on things so you know, for so many years that we're just... They, yes, they deteriorate in just a patchwork, and it was more dangerous than leaving it alone. That actually, uh, not their specific example, but that came up as as another uh, example. What happened? No, that's fine. Did they have any sessions at all at, on funding? All yeah, these various states, counties, and so yep. on. It's it's not that it isn't really uh, it's undifferent a word. I don't know. It isn't a lot different than the other stuff I've seen. They just you got this money for this, you got this money for this, but there's no mechanism put into place yet, you know. 
mostly um, property tax, though. I wonder. Do you, I mean, what what do you mean? Property tax. Funding? Most of it. Are the counties source. mostly funded by private oh, source of funds? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about like the new right. highway bill. And no, stuff. no, I apologize. No, no, it's all over the map. Mm -hmm. You know, there's two states, and Ohio's one of them. Ohio, the the county engineer is elected, and then he levies the taxes. He he has taxing authority, but he has to run, and then he can decide. I, I mean, I'm well, that's easy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, so it's a political it's a political could be dangerous. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all over the map out there too. Here's it's an how, idea. It's how the counties are funded in relation to how the how the highway departments actually get their funding. Yeah. Um, um, just a variety of all different. I, I don't want to go. <laughs> I don't want my gate to swing too far left here. But I was visiting with a. a an engineer from, or highway superintendent, she's from uh, uh, New York. New York has highway superintendents and South Dakota has highway superintendents. Everybody else has engineers. Mm -hmm. But she was going through a few things and we didn't get into the details of it, but they must get more funding from uh, the state, I'm thinking. But what they're spending that on are things that even I would be going uh, she couldn't believe that we ran all three-quarter ton four-wheel drive gas pickups. That absolutely just blew their mind. Um, no Priuses. Yeah, I mean that's there is an overlying philosophy there when you get in eastern New York. Now, not where we were necessarily. That's pretty conservative. But eastern New York, and you get into New England, and when you start talking to them, the f the philosophies are even way way different that even it's it's just so different everybody in the Midwest for the most part is property tax now in Wyoming they only have property tax so I can't remember exactly if they're all funded off of coal money or, or how that works over yeah, there resources yeah I mean so that's gonna vary from from state to state in Montana almost no sales tax right and there's right. even some highway departments and I got to be careful here. Don't put this in the paper, Alisa. <laughs> uh, Minnehaha and Lincoln and Pier, uh, Hughes, I don't think put any property tax into their highway budgets. It's all run off of wheel tax and whatever else. I don't they're know a big county and they have an awful lot of uh, license plate fees and things yeah. like that. Yeah. And they don't have a lot of county roads because it's all state and municipal. Yep. They get very little of the county system that yep. they have to maintain. It's just a whole different thing. Right. So even in even here I, I guess I, within the South Dakota well, there's a major difference. Right. right. And I, I've had this conversation with Kathy about the amount of property tax that funds the highway department and I tried to ask I couldn't even ask that question to the other highway superintendents and get them to understand what I was telling them. I was curious as what percentage of their budget is funded by the general fund, I guess, I think was my right. question. Mm -hmm. And half of them couldn't even... Yeah, half they didn't them, understand the question. They didn't get the question or else they said, well, what are you talking about? We don't get any money out of the general mm -hmm. fund. So, I mean, it's yeah. it's all over the map. Sure. Um, and for us, there's a handful of counties out West River, you know, that are just totally rural. It's yeah. It's just mostly county and rural districts. But they don't have $5 million worth of law enforcement issues either. Mm -hmm. So, the other thing you got to remember, everything's closer together. Your cost of taking your load of gravel from your pit or your asphalt from your plant to where you're going, you know, a lot of those counties plow the state roads. Wisconsin takes care of all the state roads in the county. Uh, so does parts of New York. I mean, those it's all completely different. Michigan's that way. And then Michigan has townships, which are actually function more like South Dakota's counties do. And then their counties are these great big because the popular rural population in the unincorporated areas is so high out in those places, you know. Well, yeah, then you have places where the town is actually bigger than the county. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah, it would be. Um, and then the one I want to make a comment about the speaker we had. He was the last. He was the highest ranking fireman that came out of the Twin Towers alive. And I tell you what, if you think you're having a crappy day and can sit through and listen to that guy and still... He's the one that was caught in the yeah, stairwell. Yeah, he was in caught the in the stairwell. Mm -hmm. And him, yeah. him describing, but even the, even the things they had to do prior to the actual when they got trapped, 
it's, I'm just sitting here going, I would have been just mm -hmm. losing my mind. So trivia for you, how many elevators are, were in each one of the Twin Towers, do you think? You mean individual clear to the top? Yep. Well, you got to remember in big buildings, they have, they have, uh, staged. yeah, like express elevators, you might get on the 40th floor and it won't stop till the 100th, okay, so, but how many elevators do you think were in each one of them buildings? Probably 20, 25. There's 99 in each building. Guess how many stairwells there were? Three. Oh, wow. In each building, and they're 32 inches wide, so a fireman covered up in his all his gear to the whole was trying to get up while they're trying to get everybody else down and he, he's just going through that it's it's insane but yeah. anyway and you, and you he, get people in yeah house, sitting on the one down. floor mm -hmm. and uh he's yeah. got the book out but i was just sitting there going i've heard him yeah. speak it's pretty amazing it's uh yeah. Yeah, my my problems aren't really that bad. Right? That's why it was a lot more fun being a fireman in the city of Aberdeen than it would have been anywhere <laughs> with anything <laughs> over five stories high. <laughs> so, well, that's about question for you. Okay, under the new township oh, Alberts and stuff. Yeah, is the townships responsible for anything regardless of size? Yeah, they've always been. They have. I thought there was a cubic feet that. There way. is, but that. Okay, so. Explain that to me a little bit. Well, we've been getting some calls on yep, it. Yep, and, <laughs> and it's going to continue. I'm glad you brought it up because I, I forgot to jot that down. Um, I'll tell you how I intend to handle this transition, but I'll tell you what it is first. So the way that that law you're referring to reads is everything's the townships. If it's on the township road and it's not a bridge, it's the townships. Hear me out. When they go to replace one that's over... 15.9 square foot opening, then the county may participate and then the township would have to give the county 500 bucks. That's what the law actually says right now. And from what I understand, that law was not repealed when they added the, the new law. So that one's still on the books, okay? Almost every other county except Brown uh, would part. Eh? Some don't even participate. Nobody participated like we do. We just leave them alone. So it's a problem. Yes, we go in and we freaking dealt with them because it leads to more problems. Okay, so the townships in Brown County are suffering a little more heartbreak on this deal than most counties because with the new funding, when that becomes available, there's no way to act. The county can't access that without the townships applying to us for it. Um, so that's that's where the problem is. We, we were just doing something above and beyond what we had to because it was kind of easier. Um, and also it helped us be able to maintain the continuity of the drainage, flow capacity you know, through the different jurisdictions from county to township. If, they, if the township said we're putting a four foot pipe in and we you had six above and six below, it was a way for the county to try and maintain that continuity of flow potential. Right. So now what's happened is we'll get some money. We, we got some money and we we're doing this inventory and we're still tweaking it a little bit. And we've collected all the data and we actually got a report back. Here's your problems. Double check these. And, and that's what we're doing. And then once that's done, they can come in and apply if they're culverts and they qualify, each township qualifies for the money, which includes a uh, opt-out or a 50 cents on a thousand valuation, things like that, that they have to do in order to qualify for the money. So in theory, let's say Westport Township has a culvert go out that meets the criteria and everything's cool, you, uh, there'll be a little simple application where you'll bring in and say, hey, we want this. And we'll say, okay, yep, looks good. We'll use that pool of money, pay for 80% of it, and the township will pay for the other 20% of it. Then are you responsible to put it in, or they have to get their own contractors, right? Yeah. Yep. So then, basically, through the new law, they made our county superintendent in charge of the funds for the township. Pretty much. Well, the county commission. The well, county commission. Yeah. We would have authorized through, through, through your <laughs> office. You're the one that's right. managing it, basically. Right. Right, so now you bring up something else. <coughs> this is applying reality to the situation. We may come into a scenario where 
one of these pipes washes out. Now the town and the township, okay, we want to apply for the money. They don't qualify because they're not eligible. Either they haven't opted out or whatever. And and then I'm like, well, then what do we do? You know, and the county goes back to what they've been doing before. Well, I'm, I'm afraid that's where we'll end up. Mm -hmm. But exactly my point. Yep. So there may be something where I tell it. I tell them, well, golly, if you go pass a 50 on a thousand and see if that you can get that through then you qualify then we can use this money over here and the other thing is if there's any hydrology if they want to upsize them you're going to have to have a hydrological thing done if you put in the same size no problems i don't am i helping well yeah i just i just so right right now we have we have three pipes and, and i first my first reaction to kendall was don't do anything with them right now. We got to figure out what's up with the new funding. Well, then the guy that's not on the township board but impacted by the pipe being is going, mm -hmm. well, what the hell, you know? So what we're probably going to do on a case by case basis right now, if the pipe didn't wash out and we don't have to replace the pipe right now. We'll probably go in and backfill it. I told Kendall we should probably do it on that one because it's all it is is going in and just covering it up. But at some point we're gonna have to, you know, then rip the bandaid off at some point. So I mean. then, <laughs> then we're gonna bring up yeah. a really no touchy well, subject. You've got the Hall Crossing, right? That's a bridge. Is, is that bridge. considered a bridge? Yeah. Okay, that was my. <laughs> <laughs> now, the other the other thing that's been done. There's pipe in there. The, oh, the, no, no, you're right. Um, the other the other uh, thing there that you can't prevent. I guess you you know you can, you can prevent whoever is my successor is someday. I'm not going to do this to the townships because I know they have the same reason we don't give to the township roads. We have a bunch of roads that should be township roads. Well, we're not going to. They can't afford them either, right? Um, but uh, the pipe, some counties take out a bridge and then put pipe back in there, but space them out so it's not doesn't meet the legal definition of a bridge. And now they've just handed four big culverts to the township, and I know that that has happened. Yeah. Um, I won't. I wouldn't do that. Uh, we've taken some of them just off, but I, the. It's kind of if that's actually your your intent is to take something and change it from a bridge that's the county's responsibility and do something to it to force it onto the township. That's kind of dirty pool in my book. I wouldn't do that, and I don't. I we haven't uh, we haven't done that in reality. And I got to sit and think. If we usually space them pipes so that if something weird ever happened and you still wanted to use federal money on it, you could. That's why you do that. It's still qualified. It's still, it's still technically a bridge. What you got to have to space those pipes to qualify for a bridge. Yeah, it has to be half. The whole thing's got to be longer than 20 feet from the outside of one pipe to clear to the other end. And then the, the distance between them can't be more than half the diameter of the smallest pipe in the series. So I think it's three five-footers, one, two, three, with two and a half feet between them. Is the smallest setup you can have to be a bridge. Three, five foot. Sometimes the channel isn't big enough to accommodate right. all Right, you got to make sense of it with the channel, and is it you know a straight yep. ninety or is it going through diagonal? And, you know. and the other thing is that you got to play a little bit careful too. Is that townships can dissolve, and then the county becomes responsible. There's a process for the counties to yep. dissolve, bring their books to the auditor's office, yep. and let the county take care of it. So you know that's kind of a We've had that conversation <coughs> once or twice, and the realization is you're not going to get any more resources. It's just it's the same. Know, some of them don't care because uh, right, they ain't getting very good now. Right, right. It's much difference. Yeah. But yeah. So one of the things that county's got to be aware of then is the the qualifications for that money. Right. Is they have to have the opt out or else the fifty cents per hundred per per thousand. Right. And, and they got to have, have local effort involved. And then uh, they have a twenty percent match. Um, and then they have oh, there's one more thing a five year plan. Now it doesn't have to be. It, as a matter of fact, I think it's just specific to the culvert plan. Okay, so if you have, I mean, I already know it's going to be a bigger deal than it needs to be. But if you have five pipe out there in your county, just one, two, three, 
four fifty here, there's our five year plan and that'll probably qualify. They just want some effort to show that you're you're aware so of what you got. The counties that have not opted out or anything. That's gonna put you kind of in a peculiar spot because you're gonna be the one that determines whether this application is good or not, or does that go on to the state? No, we'll decide it, but there's no it's black or white, you know. Yeah, the county they can look at the or not. Of the county yeah. Exactly. Well, that's what I, my question was: yeah, Is there going to be any forgiveness in that, or is that going to have to be the way it is? Yes, yeah, right. right. Right now, it is. And that's the application. Either you are or you aren't. And if you're not, here's the steps to do it. Or so that kind of puts a little pressure on the township. That's not opt out. Just to opt out, just for precautionary things. Right. Well, it would be. If they, what if they have the 20 percent match? You know, oh, there was a 20 yeah. Yeah. If yeah. they have the 20 percent already in their township, yeah. they still have to opt out. Yeah, those, those are all the. So they have to act yeah. harder in order to get the money yeah. that yeah. they have yeah. available. Yeah, that's yeah. Point exactly. Yeah. It's something you should think about too. <laughs> yep. It's Same thing with water projects and things like that. You know, if it's you know municipality and you want to sort of funds for a water project and stuff, what are your current rates and what are you doing? You know, but the other side of that is, you have to have the election to pass that opt out. Three so if your citizens township say so. no, we're not doing it. Right. It puts the township board in a real spot. That's really interesting. Right. But if the township well, I was thinking about, about this yesterday, as a matter of fact. I mean, that's kind of the position we're board. in. It's like, they why don't you guys take better care of the county board. roads? Well, it's partly because we don't want our taxes increased for the last several generations. So you know, we've artificially kept the budget lower than it should be to do what we need to in order to try and satisfy yeah. that desire not to pay more property taxes than we have to. So it's. You know. So what's the total amount that the township has to opt out for in order to apply for this program? A thousand bucks. It's fifty fifty cents per a thousand uh, road levy, or I'm not sure what the or an opt out or an opt out. But I don't I so don't what's know. What's the opt out? It's probably in the book. There's a little guy oh, that okay. goes with it. Like what'll end up happening with this? There's a lot of questions right now. But you're on the committee that's working on this, aren't you, Dirk? Kind of. It's like yeah. the highway <laughs> supers and auditors are kind of working on getting. Uh, and I think SDACP is as well getting the application together, yep. getting clarification on all of this. And once the application and clarification has been developed, there will be information disseminated to townships and the private communication both through the highway department and the auditor's office and we do our annual township packets on what the funding is, where the funding comes from, and how to access the funding. So like right now there aren't even answers to a lot of these questions because it's still being worked out through these groups. Um. As you mentioned before, we all know most other counties just say you're on your own, figure it out. Right. So that that's actually where the problem. Beetle County isn't having this discussion you and I are having because they're just like it's your problem. Your problem. Um, but you know the other side of it is you got flooding, you got call for problems in Brown County now. The roads right. haven't even been established. So yeah. how do you how do you? It's, well, like, a federal, federal, it's like a federal program. Right. No, I, but you're you're absolutely right. That's why I'm saying I don't want to sit here and go. Yep, we're just going to go replace every single one of them. Well, it's, I understand your point. Yeah, there's there's one that one that I specifically I was referring to. I know we can go down there with a freaking little jumping jack and throw a couple loads of material in there and probably be okay. Uh, That's the, the one up north. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you, I can't. It's right below what's your buckets farm. It's just right. Um, we can make this an agenda item too once. Yeah. Like the public and their Well, I oh. think it's important for the commission when we get the very calls good. that very good. We can actually tell the people that the rules and regulations have not been established as of yet. Really. Right. Right. So you know, for on our end, you know, for us <coughs> to start telling people, well, this is how it works, when we're not sure that's how it works. We best be saying the rules and regulations haven't been established. Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. There's yep. resources with good intent, but the details are, are being worked on, and they are being worked on. Yep. Now the other thing that nobody said yet, and I have no idea how much money we're going to get, but the county has been taking care of these right for the last X number of years. I went back and looked. I think we only replaced five last year in the whole county. Now, whether or not the townships will get a little more excited because there's going to be some money, but you know, we've already been doing them all ourselves, is what I'm getting at, and we only did four or five last year. Now, at our cost, it's, gonna, it's entirely different than what it's going to cost if they hire a contractor, right away. Right. But uh, we're not talking about 50 projects here. I got to say that I hope I'm wrong because it'd be nice to get able to utilize that, you know, maximize our use of that money, but I don't, 
I don't think we're going to have enough stuff go bad to meet the amount of money that we we're going to have. So what I'm kind of saying is, if somebody applies for one of these, I got a feeling they're going to get it funded because check a couple boxes off. Yeah. We're off we're doing. So so then, if you get X amount of dollars and the townships don't apply anything, is there a time? In point that the county then can keep that money, or does that always have to remain in the special fund for townships? Yep. See, not, this isn't a county program. This is a township it's program. It's sitting well, in a custodial fund right now. Yeah, she's got some right now, and we okay. accounted for separately. And we're pinching a little bit of it now to pay for John keeps having some ongoing things, so he spends about an hour and a half a day or so working on this, and we've been putting it on his time card. And that fund can just go on and on for years if it's not being used and. We don't have well. We don't technically have that decision yet. What the only thing yeah, I've heard the rules that are rules are right. the rules that are written. The only thing I've heard is that the money that we've already received, even if we don't use it for the inventory and getting it ready, we will be able to roll that over. roll that over and well, use it for. Scary part of that too is that if somehow it isn't used, then somehow the legislature always figures out a way to say, well, you ain't using it, so you ain't getting no more money. Right. And so then pretty soon the the whole thing just kind of. Well, and despite my, my in which case it would be better off they left it alone in the first place. Exactly, <laughs> but the, <laughs> d despite my lack of affinity for some of the stuff that comes flying out of the legislature, the uh, they are the ones that actually took the ball because on this topic, and I, uh, you know, <laughs> bitching about the uh, transportation commissions like saying you don't believe in God, you hope like hell you're right, right? But uh, they. Re rejected different variations of trying to get some funding for these several times and the DOT we lack to get traction in there and the Transportation Commission in my 20 years has moved way more inward uh, with concentrate on the state stuff rather than the whole and they have their reasons and that's their prerogative and that's fine but Nobody was in favor of this the reason that this thing went through the legislature is because of Caleb Fink and and uh, can't think of the other guy but they stuck to it they dug in there and the townships uh, people were very very heavily involved they do a for, good job for hammering it through mm -hmm. you know? my involvement was making sure that they weren't going to deflect more stuff onto the counties like two years ago when they were going to make that may replace the culvert a shell and um, so this has been and it's about the ninth incarnation of this plan you know it's it's you guys know it's morphed mm -hmm. about ten right. times so there's going to be some heartburn in Brown County. I'm not like going to put up the wall and say, "All right, nope, too bad, we're done." But we have to move forward with a little more thought than just, "Yeah, we'll go in there and get it fixed and go on to the next one," because we do have 44 townships, you know. So, all right. Wow. Yeah. Good thing we don't have times on the agenda anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're over. <laughs> I'm blaming Patricia. Okay. <coughs> Is there anything else? You want to drag in another half hour conversation? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving on to the consent calendar. Kathy. We have the general meeting minutes of April 26th and our consolidated board at equalization meeting. Move. Second. Motion by Feldheim. Second by Gage. All in favor signify by saying aye. All aye. right. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Clay. <coughs> Move. Sorry. Motion by Fikert, second by Weiss. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. HR report. Move. Second. Motion by Weiss, second by Gage. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Abatement. Move. Sorry. Motion by Feldheim, second by Weiss. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Leases. Move. Motion by Gage, second by Weiss. All in favor, second favor, saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. That's everything that we have this week. Other business, I believe Commissioner Gage, you have a couple things. Yep. Just wanted to bring up uh, through the uh, senior center would be basically south of Arby's there. Uh, they got their senior week activities coming up for May 9th through the 13th including some bingo, karaoke, root beer floats on Friday. I just wanted me to mention and give a, a little more of a word out there that that's going on. So they got stuff basically going on every day, all next week, so. Okay. Is that for the three of us, or is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what? Technically, uh, <laughs> you guys would probably call it. 
three, four of us? <laughs> four. <laughs> four out of five, I think, would go. <laughs> I don't Thanks. think so card so we might all be able to sneak in. I believe May is uh, Military Appreciation Month, so on behalf of Brown County, I would like to extend our appreciation to those who have, are presently, or will in the future serve our country in the military. Thank you. Anything else to come before this Brown County Commission? I believe we have a request for personnel, executive session. Oh. Motion by Weiss. Want to put legal on there too. Legal also. Okay. Second. Second by call time. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. We are in executive session. We're not that much fun. <laughs> Everyone is when I don't say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you get a left, we have something going on. <laughs> Camera is back on. We're out of exec with no action as a result. Is there anything else to come before the Brown County Commission this morning? Not everyone's entertaining a motion to adjourn. Move. So a motion by Fikert, second by Gaines to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Good day.